the Edmonton Oilers and the 1979 NHL Entry Draft. Let's talk sports talk. <laughs> everybody welcome back to the channel gss is the name of the channel ltss or ltst yeah that's the name of the series i uh i invented it i i know uh yeah anyway so welcome back to the channel thank you guys first off for the first video i posted an abundance of love positive comments fantastic critiques and notes for me i i really do appreciate that i love that community involvement i love talking sports so thank you for giving me an opportunity to do that, and thank you for encouraging me to make this video about the 1979 entry draft. As an Euler fan, this is the stuff of legends, passed down from generation to generation, each time the child saying, what do you mean there's more? And then my dad saying, oh yes, son, there is way, way more to talk about. The NHL 1979 entry drafts, I mean, there's a lot of things we need to talk about. First thing I want to talk about is the expansion teams. The next thing I want to talk about are the rule changes. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about is Wayne Gretzky and how he fits into this story. Another thing I want to point out is I put up a hockey jersey here. I thought it might be a fun little game to play with my 13 subscribers. What name do you think is on the back of this jersey? I'm 25 years old. For context, I've been an Oiler fan since, I'll say, deeply since 2006. When they made that cup run, that's really when I got into it as about a 12, 13-year-old, I think? Younger? Maybe a little younger? I don't know. Age is irrelevant. But anyway, whose name do you think is on the back of this jersey? Guess the name, and I will... I don't know. I'll be... I'll be I don't know. I'll give you one of these. Guess the name, I'll send you a personalized thumbs up in the next video. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a shout out. Back to the 79 entry draft. So the first thing I want to talk about is the expansion. The NHL in 1979 finally stopped expanding, for a little bit at least. They are coming off a 13 year period where they were adding teams like crazy, moving teams around, and really what they were trying to do was destroy the WHA, a rivaling hockey league at the time. The WHA was kind of a group of nomads because they had a lot more lenient rules than the NHL. The NHL was trying to be professional and the official league of hockey and all very proper and good, where the WHA was kind of like, well, pfft, whatever you got, we'll put it on the ice. And that was becoming very evident towards the end of their lifespan. The quality of players just weren't there and the NHL was taking over. So, this expansion was a little different. Rather than just adding teams from scratch, like we saw with Seattle and Vegas a few years ago, these teams already had fully formed competitive rosters. Mind you, I say competitive loosely. I mean, these guys had bodies and they could skate, which is what you will hear Bob McKenzie say in every single draft interview or every single prospect analysis that they ever do. Oh yeah, he's got a body, he can sure skate. I got a body, I can skate. Where's my call? Anyway, whatever, I digress. Back to the expansion teams. The four expansion teams were as follows. Quebec Nordiques, Hartford Whalers, Winnipeg Jets, Edmonton Oilers. It'll be nice to note that the Oilers are the only team that made it in their city. The other three teams unfortunately had to relocate. And two of those cities have never seen NHL action since. Sorry, Quebec. But because we know a little thing or two about expansion drafts, given that we've just seen a few, how is this one different given that they already had fully formed rosters? Well. It wasn't really a full expansion draft. You weren't grabbing a player from each team. There was a select few players that were grabbed from the already established NHL teams. It wasn't as big of a deal as it was when Vegas or Seattle broke into the league. So the way that these expansion teams were fit into the actual draft was a little differently. Rather than being put into the draft lottery to see who would be at the top of the draft, these four teams that already had full rosters were put into the bottom of the draft. Deeming that perhaps the Colorado Rockies needed that first pick more than anybody, which very well might have been the case. So, the Edmonton Oilers would be put in a little raffle to decide if they would pick 21st, 20th, 19th, or 18th. Or would they? They in fact would not be put into that draft lottery for a very interesting reason we will get to later. But first I want to talk a little bit about the other rule changes that were implemented in the draft in 1979. For one, all the players drafted in 1979 had to wear a helmet from this point on in the league. Not really pertinent to this video, but just interesting. I mean, why would you not wear a helmet if you're playing in the NHL? I have no idea. You're going to have to ask Craig McTavish if he has any brain cells left. 
which he seemingly does, and I am very surprised to hear that. But the other rule change is very pertinent to the video, and that rule change was that all 19-year-olds were now eligible for the NHL draft. Before this, the NHL draft was only eligible for players 20 and older. Seems absolutely ludicrous considering what we have for talent levels at 18-year-olds today. I mean, if Sidney Crosby or, or Connor McDavid or Patrick Kane had to wait until they were 20 years old until they broke into the league, I mean, it's a good thing they changed the rules. So now in 1979, you had all the 20 year olds that were already getting ready to be drafted, plus a whole new group of 19 year olds that just found out a few months ago, I, I, I guess, that they were gonna be drafted as well. So you had pretty much doubled the player pool while in fact, shortening the amount of rounds. The 1979 draft only had six rounds with 21 teams. That equals off the top of my head, 126 picks. I did not do that math, do not let me trick you. <laughs> So with all these rule changes in mind, you have four new teams entering the league all at the bottom of the 1979 draft, plus you have these new rules that enable more players to be drafted, plus you have a lot smaller of a draft for all these players to be selected in. So I mean, just given this information, you know that this draft is probably going to be one of the most stacked of all time. And I'm not going to break down the whole draft, there's plenty of videos doing that. Just look it up online, it's absolutely insane. And the Oilers, in my opinion, and this is my unbiased opinion, definitely, I'm sure a lot of the hockey community would agree, won this draft tenfold. Not just because of who they ended up drafting, but because of the Wayne Gretzky element of this draft. Now you might be wondering, how does Wayne Gretzky work into all of this? Wayne Gretzky was an Oiler when he broke into the league. He was an Oiler when he broke into the league, but he was never drafted by the Edmonton Oilers or any NHL franchise for that matter. Wayne Gretzky started his professional hockey career on kind of, I don't know, unceremonious terms. It wasn't the way he wanted to start his professional hockey career, let's put it that way. Wayne Gretzky was absolutely dominating the Junior League in Ontario, didn't have the heart or maybe the scholastic ability to make it in collegiate level athletes, so he decided to go play for a Nomad League. The Nomad League he went to play for was the WHA. And who did he sign with? The Edmonton Oilers? No, he did not. He signed a personal services contract with the Indianapolis Racers. Now, what is a personal service contract in relation to a hockey contract? Well, essentially, all you need to know about a personal service contract is that it's not a hockey exclusive contract. Essentially, the Indianapolis Racers were hiring Wayne Gretzky to play hockey among other things? We'll thankfully never know what those other things were because he was traded to the Edmonton Oilers not long after signing. Thankfully, the Indianapolis Racers saw the writing on the wall. They knew the league was disbanding, so they shipped off Wayne Gretzky to a team that was actually being absorbed by the NHL in the expansion. And who did they call? The Edmonton Oilers. No, they did not. They called the Winnipeg Jets. That's right. The Indianapolis Racers called the Winnipeg Jets before the Winnipeg Jets became an NHL franchise and said, hey, we got this superstar young phenom that is going to be playing in the NHL next year anyways. Why don't we give you to him? You'll have a head start with this superstar. And thank you, Winnipeg. They said no thank you. And the next call from the Indianapolis Racers general manager was none other than Edmonton Oilers owner Peter Pocklington. Peter Pocklington, of course, said, yes, 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 I will take this Wayne Gretzky and I will sign him to a 10-year contract. He signed Wayne Gretzky to a 10-year contract when he was 18 years old. You might be thinking, that's a genius move. Good job for Peter Pocklington. He saw the potential and he signed the phenom. But it was also a little bit of a sneaky move because another interesting rule change that was added on to all of these other things in the 1979 draft was that if you were an underage player, that means under the age of 19 years old by the time of draft, that had already been playing professionally in the WHA, you were also eligible for that 1979 entry draft. So to add that on top of all the other rule changes that were happening, you had 20 year olds, you had 19 year olds, you had a smaller draft, you had four new expansion teams, plus you also had all the underage players that were playing in the WHA also putting into this draft pool, which would include Wayne Gretzky, as he was an underage WHA player when the Edmonton Oilers moved from WHA hockey to NHL hockey. And then this is where the beauty of this story comes together. I'm not sure why I would love to ask the pointed questions to the people that were involved in this, but the NHL and Peter Pocklington with Wayne Gretzky worked out a little deal. Wayne Gretzky didn't want to go play for the Colorado Rockies, who had the first overall pick in that draft. It was pretty likely that Wayne Gretzky was going to go first overall, but hey, Winnipeg passed on him, and this draft had Mark Messier go at 48, so who knows what was going to happen. 
But Wayne Gretzky made it very clear that he signed this 10-year contract in Edmonton, expecting to play in Edmonton for the next 10 years. And that's exactly what the NHL let him do. They decided to say, Wayne Gretzky, you do not have to be in this NHL draft. We'll let you play for Edmonton. But they penalized Edmonton for this, knowing how good of a prospect Wayne Gretzky was. Now, how did they penalize Edmonton? Well, in some sort of weird way, they gave them Kevin Lowe. And what I mean by that is that the Oilers were no longer a part of that four-team draft lottery at the bottom of the draft. The Oilers were now just slotted in at 21. They said, you can keep Wayne Gretzky, but we're going to slide you down to 21. You don't even have a chance of getting the 20th, 19th, or 18th overall pick. Dang it. The Oilers, they fell down in the draft. They got the 21st pick. That 21st pick, like I said, was Kevin Lowe, a future Hall of Famer, five-time Stanley Cup, six-time Stanley Cup champion, forgive me. And the rest is kind of history. The 1979 draft, without a doubt, was probably the, the best draft for any franchise in sports history. Please try and prove me wrong. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers went from a fairly decent WHA team to an absolute juggernaut in the NHL over the span of like four years. Now, granted, not all of that success is due to the 1979 draft. I mean, you look at the 1980 draft, we got Paul Coffey. 1981 draft, we have Grant Fuhr. Big pieces of that NHL dynasty were to come later. But this was really the foundation, the building blocks of what would be a fantastic dynasty in Edmonton sports history. Unfortunately, I'm too young to have seen that history. So I just make videos like this, reminiscing and thinking about, oh, what a magical time that would have been to be an Edmonton sports fan. Unfortunately, my greatest hockey memories are still yet to come, I hope. And although the success the Oilers had in the 1980s will probably never be replicated in the NHL again, I think the days of the five, six year dynasties are over. We can still hope and we can still talk sports. So I think that'll do it for this video. I hope I covered everything. I know I missed some things and please fact check me on other stuff. I just love talking sports and I love talking Oilers and I love when people comment and subscribe on my videos and I love when you hit that like button and I love when you hit that notification button as well. So that'll do it. The NHL 1979 entry draft and the Edmonton storylines that go with it. I mean Wayne Gretzky almost being a Winnipeg Jet, Wayne Gretzky signing a personal services contract, whatever that means with the Indianapolis Racers. I mean, it was a weird time in the NHL and they've come a long way since, but it's always really exciting to look back and see what was going on in the league at that time. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, check me out on the socials, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Good job. Uh